I don't know. We're just gonna wait. <sighs> Alhamdulillah, we praise God. We bear witness there is no other God beside God and He has no partner. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. This is a much bigger crowd than what I'm used to. Uh, for the past couple of years, I've been. Elena and the Jen has been my, um, my crowd. So, um, speaking of Jen's, I'm pretty sure Q's house has Jen's because my keys was right in front of me and it just, I looked and it was gone. So, uh, it's just. <laughs> All right. Settle down. So today, actually, this is a topic that I've been reflecting on. I've been talking to a few people, and um, I think it's the meat and potato of submission. Without this concept, without this principle, we will not make it. And it's not anyone's opinion. So the topic of today's sermon is devotion. So in chapter 37, verse 40, I see your vision got from saying rejected. It says, only God's servants who are absolutely devoted to him alone will be saved. So this right here sets the ground for everything. You need absolute devotion to make it. And we're going to get into, well, what is absolute devotion, right? Then we even have other verses um, that repeats this, but I want to read 15, 39, and 40. It says, and this is um, Satan he says, my Lord, since you have well that I go astray, I will surely entice them on earth. I will send them all astray, except those among your worshipers who are devoted absolutely to you alone. Who are devoted absolutely to you alone. So, so the question begs, um, how can we examine our devotion? How do we know uh, we're devoted to God alone? How do we know we have that, you know, we have that 100%. Because let's keep in mind, what's absolute? It's 100%. You're absolutely sure that God exists, right? There's no trace of a doubt. It's not like 99.999%. It's 100%. You're 100% sure that the hereafter exists, and we're going to be resurrected, and we have, we're going to be answerable to God. That's 100%. It's absolutely. You're absolutely sure. There's no, like, ifs or buts or doubts. 100%. So now... How do we examine to have the devotion? Because without that absolute devotion, there's no salvation. And that's the statement of fact. So when you're devoted to something or someone, it shows through your actions, your demeanors, right? Um, let's, let's take an example. I mean, a lot of 
time, you know, people are like health conscious, gym, working out, exercising, right? Let's take an average person who's starting their working out journey and they're really just all about it, right? They want to get in shape, they want to work out. I mean, you'll see them, you know, they're carrying a water bottle with them. Um, you know, they have, their, they have the little bag with food, salad all set up. They're researching different exercises, what to eat, what not to eat. They're gym rats, they're at the gym working out. And, you know, then you see a result. A month goes by, you see this person has made face gains, right? Like, um, you see that they're getting skinnier. And, and you can see, you know, it shows in this person's demeanor. And, and chances are, when you talk to this person, one of the conversations they're going to have with you because they're excited, that's like their thing right there. They're going to talk to you about fitness and exercise. They're going to talk to you about diet. They're going to talk to you about, you know, all these different kind of things that has to do about what they're kind of devoted at at that time, right? So this shows that when we really are interested in something, our actions must show it, right? And if our action is not showing it, right, then I think that we need to really go back, take a step back, and reanalyze ourselves, okay? And like you see examples of, for example, parenting, right? You know, like, a, uh, like you know, you take a, like a, a mother that's a role model, right? You see how there's a newborn, how, you know, dedicated, dedicated they are to um, uh, raising that kid and doing everything. You know, it just shows in your demeanor that you care, it's there. So what type of a mindset does a devout have? Um, so let's, let's, let's walk through like an ordinary day, uh, day. You wake up in the morning, right? And again, before going on this glimmer out there, then I look at myself and I examine myself and these are the things that I'm like, man, you gotta work on this, right? So by all means, I'm not preaching here. Most of you, if not all of you, are doing uh, a whole lot better, perhaps. Um, but this is just, you know, I'm not being a preacher here. I'm just going through with you. So perhaps you might be sharing the same thing. You wake up in the morning. What's the first thing that runs through your mind? Right? Meetings? Schedule? I mean, you know, you got to schedule. Your baby is crying. Your newborn is crying. Or, you know, you got multiple jobs. You got a bunch of meetings coming up. What is it? Right? The first thing that comes to your mind. Right? So a person that's devoted to God alone, the first thing they do when they wake up, they start their day with the name of God, right? Then the next step is like, all right, am I here to be a doctor? Am I here to have multiple jobs, make a lot of money? Am I here to be a good father, a good husband, you know? I mean, if you're a good submitter, by default, you'll, be, you'll have all of that. But the mindset is like, all right, I'm going to wake up. The five daily contact prayer is the most important objective of my daily task. That's the first thing. The next step is my God has to be Lord of the universe throughout this entire day. Right? That's the mindset. If you're devoted to God alone, right, and you're conscious of the hereafter, that's, that's something that has to occupy your mind when you wake up. Most times I catch myself, you know, I wake up, I'm like, shoot, I'm like half an hour late to studying, or I got to run, or I got to do this. There are days where I catch myself, and, you know, then I'll be driving, and, you know, I'm like reciting al and then I'll just, then I start reflecting. I'm like, wow, like, we really can get cut up. And this life is, is fast lane. There's so much happening all the time around us, right? If we don't have that consciousness, you'll easily get swayed, and you'll just, no bueno. So one of the most important objective than be consciousness of God. A person who's absolutely devoted to God alone is conscious of God. Consciousness of God is extremely important. And later on in my second sermon, God willing, I'm going to talk about the importance of the consciousness, okay, and the disastrous outcome of being in this autopilot mode, okay, and God willing, we're going to get to it later on. So do we think God about, do we think about God majority of our day? So in chapter 3, 191 says, they remember God while standing, sitting, and on their sides, and they reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. Our Lord, you did not create all this in vain. Be you glorified. Save us from the retribution of hell. And the footnote reads, 
Your God is whoever or whatever occupies your mind most of the time. The true believers are those who remember God most of the time. So a true believer is a person who remember God most of the time. So now let's, let's, let's go. Let's go um, a little deeper than that. All right. What are some signs and symptoms or what are some characteristics of a person, okay, who's devoted to God alone? And what are the signs that you're not devoted to God alone? One of the things you ask yourself is, do you get anxious? Do you get anxious about anything, right? You have a job, thing, uh, something coming up in your life, whatever it is, right? Do you get anxious or do you trust and put your you know, confidence in God? Do you have fear? Do you have fear that your health or provisions or, you know, and like for example, in, in, in my current situation, you know, finished medical school and now the next step will be residency, right? You know, do you, be, do you get anxious when you think about, oh my God, you know, I'm, I gotta do these applications, right? And, you know, like what's gonna happen? The unknown, you know, the fear a lot of times is that like the unknown, right? We think about the unknown and we're like, oh, what's gonna happen, right? And you, can, and you can apply this across the board to a lot of different things. Whatever you're going through your life, do you have, are, do you have, are you anxious? Do you fear, do you have, uh, are you worried about anything, your children? You know, in today's society, this whole school system, for example, you see they're teaching all these, you know, nonsense and uh, critical race theory about homosexuality. So the kids nowadays, like for example, people like Arsha and Darian and everyone around here, they're gonna be exposed to a lot of nonsense. But guess what? As a parent, if you're with God, God will see to it that your child, your children will be under God's protection. You do your part, you teach them about you, you religiously um, educate them. And God will take care of the rest. Um, so, you know, there's no worry there. Don't think that if your kids are going to be exposed to something, oh, my God, they're going to bad influence, all that stuff. You do your part, and God will do his part. And God's part is already done. Provision. Um, and actually, before I go with speaking of children, and this is no one's opinion. Messenger, God teaches us through his messenger that raising children for believers is a piece of cake. Now, a lot of people are like, dude, you're tripping. You don't have kids. You know what you're talking about. Like, it's like they, they, they're just these parasites. They're these creatures, right? Like, they cry. But here's the thing. You do your part, and that takes trust and confidence, God. Do your part, and God will do his. And again, God's part is already done. We just got to do our part. And when we're with God, and we better be solidly with God. When we're with God, all affairs will be taken care of. Provisions, provisions. Markets crashing, China, um, Russia invading Ukraine, oh my God, the stock market, uh, cryptocurrency is crashing. <laughs> it's crashing and, you know, I want to have a baby, can I afford it, right? Um, and, you know, you have to really, like, a lot of times the answer to this question is like, oh, of course not, of course I'm not going to say that. I'm talking about deep down in your subconscious. I mean, we're creatures that we rationalize, right? I mean, we can really convince ourselves of, of anything. I mean, it, it's, it's incredible how we can rationalize things. So I'm talking, about, I'm talking about really, really examine yourself deeply. Do you worry? Provisions. Do you think somehow the economy, the change of presidency, or anything can affect your provisions? How much money you make, okay? Um, a person that's devoted to God alone, right, understand that even before Genesis, their provision was already set. Health, eat this, don't eat this. God says eat and drink in moderation in chapter 7, um, 31. Uh, and the reason why I always memorize that verse is because 07, 31st is my birthday, so I think it's a sign for me that I need to eat and drink in moderation. <laughs> eat and drink in moderation. You're not, we're not like, check your sugar, eat this food, don't eat that food, don't eat that this much. All you have to do is eat and drink in moderation and follow God's command. If you think that you're going to be healthy because of your diet, you are planning a disaster for yourself. Because that's idol worship. A person that's devoted to God alone, right, understands these things, understands that it's not the food that you eat, 
that's going to make you healthy. I mean, use your mind. Use your common sense. But the commandment is very straightforward. Eat and drink in moderation. And all <laughs> health, wealth, all these uh, peace of mind, security, contentment, all these are an outcome of our submission to God alone, not our actions in this worldly sense. Let me go do this so I can make more money here. Let me eat this so I can be healthy here. Let me do this. Let me do yoga so I can be more at peace, right? That's not, those are just, you know, if, if you're a good submitter, you'll enjoy those things, right? But a devoted person to God alone is not going to have that mindset. And, I, you know, I have, for example, um, you have, mashallah, we're, okay, baby factory. Every few months, we have, like, babies coming. So, mashallah, we have few, we have few um, pregnant moms, and I was actually having a discussion with one of them. And um, when you have, when you're bearing a child, whether you're, the, you're bearing a child or, you know, you're the spouse, does your mindset change? Do you think food, sushi, coffee, do you think those things are going to impact your child and they're going to, you know, somehow they're going to be affected by it, right? Is, is, has anything, all you're doing is, there's another creature growing in you, which is kind of cool, but, um, but nothing's going to change. Your protection is going to be the same, if not augmented, because you're carrying another creature with you. All you got to do is uphold God's commandments. You know, God says in chapter 13, 11, there's shifts of angels taking turn, protecting you. A devoted person to God alone remembers that. Lastly, do we see God's kingship over us? How, what does that mean? We come to Quran studies, right? Do we come? This book, this message that we receive from God is loaded with information, with wisdom. Every verse of this the Quran is so much depth. If you reflect on it, you're going to have questions. You want them to make comment. There's so much to it, right? What do we do? What do we do? Do we come to Masjid? Because we have made this formulated, this habitual routine of coming and going? Or do we come and reflect on the verses? Oh, it's hot. The kids are loud. Um, we don't have air conditioning. The circulation isn't good, right? Thoughts that have, you know, gone through my head. We're here to please God. You know, do we come and reflect? You know, uh, discord is no sub substitute with frequenting God's master. I mean, once in a while something happens, you can't make it. You know, it's, it is there. But it's not a replacement. You know, these things shows our priority. All these things will show um, if we're devoted to God alone. Do we frequent God's master? Are we advancing or are we regressing? Right? Constantly, we have to, guys, we have to examine the logic of our belief very critically. We have to be the harshest critic when it comes to ourself. Right? And it's no joke. This is our third and final chance. And if you go through this, you're like, well, man, it almost sounds like you're saying we have to be a perfect person to make it. And just to wrap it up, let's see who are the people that we know for sure made it. We have the example of Abraham, all the prophets in the Quran, right? Abraham, David, Solomon, Jesus. Why are the God says the history of my messenger sets a precedent for you? Why are they mentioned? It's because that's the level of devotion that you're going to need to make it. That's the level. These are the kind of people that when the angels said put them in hell, God knew because these servants were so devoted that they did not deserve it. So it's not wishful thinking. I don't want to be a pessimist. We have to be hopeful, but we also have to be realistic. We can't be wishful thinkers. That's what children of Israel think. Oh, we're submitters. We take comfort in the fact that we're submitters. Just how the children of Israel oh, were God's chosen people. Why are they mentioned, mentioned so frequently in the Quran? Because they represent this human tendency, right? So, yes, in order to make it, which very handful of people will make it, you have to have 100% devotion. The de devotion to God cannot be divisible. It has to be indivisible. It has to be God and God only. And our actions will show that. Our demeanor will show that. Our priorities in life will show that. So it will behoove us to take a step back and reflect on these, uh, on these quote unquote gauges and really see if we're 100% devoted to God alone. Because if we're not, according to the verses of the Quran, we're not going to, because it's not 100%, we're not. We will be wishful thinkers. At this point, let's repent to Allah.
Alhamdulillah, we praise God. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahtahu la sharika ala. Bear witness, there is no other God beside God, and He has no partners. The one more thing I wanted to add to this too, do we worship God alone, only privately, or do we do it publicly? You know, at the beginning when you come to submission, for example, saying God willing can be, um, because like, oh, people are going to judge me, like I'm saying God willing, it's just you might not feel comfortable, right? When you write your emails, do you say God willing? That's when you worship God alone privately, when you publicly, one of it is like, you, you show people that, you know, you're a man or woman of God through your actions. And then when you say something, you say God willing. Or do you shy away from saying God willing? Because you fear what people will think about you more than, you know, you care more about what God thinks of you. So what are the consequences of not having this absolute devotion? Well, for start, in this world, we pay with our happiness. You know, if you're, if, if we need to pump the brake. We are living in a world that's fast lane. Things are going really fast. I mean, things are just happening really fast. If we just want to get going with the current, you're just going to get wiped away. You got you to gotta take a step back, pump the brakes, right? And you start reanalyzing your, your priorities. Um, Another example, you're going to have problems with your, an answer to a question, Messenger Covenant says that um, as well. A question, why do I have a problem in life? If you have a lingering, something that's happening in your life, why do I have a problem? Chances are that you're not devoted to God alone, and which, it's, which goes hand in hand with being, conscious, being uh, conscious of God. When God is not your God, Chances are this is the reason why you have a problem that you can't figure out what's happening, right? Uh, and there are so many different things that um, can replace, you know, God um, with having a little um, lowercase g God for ourselves. Ego, uh, being caught up with, you know, work, children, I mean, so many different things. So how do we enhance or augment our devotion? That's the next question. Well... You got to first pray to God because that's a gift that God gives you, you know? It's not something that you can just attain, okay, um, without you being worthy of it. So how do we show that worthiness? You know, everything, uh, we talked about last night, all these guys, all these things that we do in life, the commandments, everything we do, they're gifts from God. And guess what? You have to be worthy of these gifts, right? Come into Quran study. For example, that's a gift from God. If you don't deserve it, that gift will be taken away from you. Doing your salad, being with the, I mean, all these things are gifts from God. All these provisions for our soul, whatever it is, is a gift from God. And if you want it, if you want to augment and enhance your devotion to God alone, first thing first, you got to implore God and pray to Him so He perfects His life for you. Second thing, you have to show through your action. You can't ask for something without showing it, without showing it in your, in your demeanor. Our actions demonstrate our belief. If you're, I mean, it's the example that I, me and Alana, for example, we really appreciate coming to Quran studies because we've been away, right? And we really, well, I guess you sometimes don't really know what you have until like it's not there anymore. Then you really start appreciating it. So, like, we're always like, man, before we're just like, oh, man, I can't wait. Like, I mean, we would say, like, we can go to masjid, like, physically be present, frequent the masjid, participate, right? Um, and really, it's something that we might take for granted. I mean, there's so much wisdom in forcing ourselves to be with the believers. I want to uh, bring this to your attention, this verse, the way it's worded in 1828. It says, force yourself to be with the believers, right? And the verse says... Do not turn your eyes away from them, seeking the vanities of this world. So you have this phrase that says, force yourself, which indicates that sometimes it requires a little bit of force, right? Because you might, for whatever reason, you might not want to do it. 
Then there's this other phrase that says, do not turn your eyes away from them. Why? This is your creator who has created you, who knows what's good for you. It's giving you this recommendation. If you don't do it, you're going to pay for it. Because the current is so strong out there, right? So if we're devoted to God alone, we would want to uphold all these commandments. We want to do these. These are for our own good, right? And we can, again, rationalize and say, I'm busy, I'm this, I'm that. Um, um, but that's just an excuse. God tells us in chapter, um, we give priority to God's commandment and we do them wholeheartedly. This is in chapter 50, 33. They reverence the most gracious in their privacy and came wholeheartedly. You give your whole heart to God. That's what you do. So if you've been sleeping up to this point, I want you to wake up because this is the punchline. I earlier mentioned in my first sermon the disastrous nature of being in autopilot mode. Autopilot mode, we work, we drive, we brush our teeth, we move around, we do all these things without even thinking of it. And when was the last time you drove and you're like holding the steering wheel and you're like, okay, now I gotta press the gas. Okay, now I gotta like slow down and you see a stop sign and you're like, okay, now I need to like slow down, slow down. You don't even think about it. You have music blasting or sometimes the windows are down, you're just going about it. You cannot do this with submission. Autopilot mode is a, disastrous, is a disastrous outcome. It's the opposite of what God tells us to do. Consciousness. Consciousness of God is extremely important. Do we understand the message? Are we conscious of the fact that out of all these people out there, God has given us his purified message? I mean, sometimes, I don't know about you guys, I take a step back and I'm reading the Quran, I'm like, wow, God has authored every single word. And you're reading it, you're like, wow, like this is, you know, and you know 100% every single word is from God is because it's mathematically coded. But you're like, wow, my creator speaking to me through these words. So what do we do? do at night when we're about to sleep, Right? Do we spend like one hour browsing, you know, whatever we want to browse, and then just read four or five verses before passing out with one eye open, you know? Or do we actually, you know, read the Quran and understand the gift of this book? Being conscious of God, we cannot be autopilot. In this path, going through cruise control, doing things habitually, coming here and going, because it's become a routine for you, is disastrous. It's good that we're doing it, but we have to be, God says that in the Quran, it teaches us that we can be heedless of our worship practice, of our contact prayer. How can you, you're doing it, but how can you be heedless, right? So we have to make sure we're not being heedless. We're thinking about, you know, everything that's, that, that, that we're doing. So again, to, to, to kind of wrap everything up, um, if we don't have that 100% devotion to God alone, right, we better have it. And again, God says um, in one of the verses, Oh, my servants who have exceeded the limits, never despair of God's mercy. So if we've gone through today's sermon, like myself, and you, understand, and you realize that, hey, my devotion is not 100% there. We're not going to despair. Believers are hopeful. What you're going to do, you're going to promise to God that you're going to make some serious changes. That if you have gone through this, you've been going through this autopilot mode, you're going to break out of it. That you're going to be conscious of God. If you're not giving priority to God's commandment, being with the believers, studying the Quran, coming to Quran studies, right? Doing everything that God says, then you make an active effort to change. Right? Because this is our last chance and we can't we can mess it up. And again, Let's remember that God says the history of my messenger sets a precedent for you. Let's see what kind of people were they. They were amongst the most righteous and they were absolutely devoted to God alone. So we better have the same level of devotion, right? And trust and have confidence in God, okay? And we're going to mess up.
but we got to be conscious. If you're not conscious, you're not even going to realize you messed up. And lastly, God forbid, and it's, it's, it's true, the light will eventually be taken away from you. If, we're, if you don't reverence, if you have a treasure in front of you, and someone has to constantly remind you, hey, there's treasure in front of you, and you're not valuing that treasure... What does that tell you? How much are you valuing this treasure in front of you? If someone really has to come and tell you, hey, this is a treasure, and everything, oh, wow, there's treasure here. What does that say about you, right? So if we don't uphold God's commandment, if we're not devoted to God alone with our whole heart, if we don't value God's message, we can't uphold any, the, the commandments partially. We have to do the full thing, the whole thing. Light will gradually be taken away. And this is why you see 120,000 people with Moses, how many of them that are believing? Look at during the time of the message of the covenant, how many of them are around? Why? We have to ask ourselves these questions. So we have to hold fast to the rope of God and constantly examine ourselves. At this point, let's pray. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. No, it is Salat al Jumma. Allah Akbar. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al Rahman ar Rahim, Malik Yomidin, Ia Kana Abudu, Wa Ia Kana Stain. Ehdena Sarat al Mustaqim, Sarat al Ladin, and Amta Alehim, Bayr al Makdubi Alehim, Walla Dolin. Allah Akbar. سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كن عبدو ويا كن استعين اهتنا السرات المستقيم سرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقدوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له السلام عليكم السلام عليكم You liked it? You like it? Yes. Would you be my friend now? Awesome, bro. Mashallah. Mashallah. Awesome. Thank you. God bless you. Mashallah. Thank you. That was an excellent. That was an excellent. Wow. wow. You had that pent up. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's one night. Thank you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, <laughs> man.